guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering skincare ingredients you don't wanna mix. If you're new here, welcome. I am a board certified dermatologist and I love sharing my skincare knowledge with you guys. And I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and hit the thumbs up button, that helps my channel out a lot. First ingredient combination is retinol or retinoid with alpha hydroxy acid. Retinol and retinoid, these are umbrella terms for topical vitamin A, which is used to improve the look of wrinkles and fine lines. It also helps remove some sun damaged skin cells, improves hyperpigmentation, and is a treatment for acne. And part of how topical vitamin A works to help these things is that it helps in facilitating skin cell turnover. When somebody first starts a form of topical vitamin A, they can experience a lot of peeling and dryness and irritation. This is referred to as the retinization process. So why can you not combine topical vitamin A with alpha hydroxy acid? Alpha hydroxy acid is also an anti-aging ingredient that helps in removing sun damaged skin cells. It helps in improving hyperpigmentation. It also can impart some acne control. It exfoliates the skin. And so you don't wanna combine these two ingredients together because you have one ingredient that's expediting skin cell turnover, your retinol ret or retinoid, the topical vitamin A, and then you have the alpha hydroxy acid that is exfoliating. And that combination together can lead to a lot of irritation and dryness. And anytime you have irritation that can worsen hyperpigmentation, it can trigger acne. I mean, these are the things that you're trying to correct, presumably with these ingredients. So I, I don't recommend combining the two. The exception, however, is if you are using a product that is actually formulated with both ingredients, um, I think Skin Better Science has a retinol that has alpha hydroxy acid in it and that's actually been shown to be effective but uh, yeah otherwise I, I wouldn't recommend doing that alpha hydroxy acids by the way include lactic acid glycolic acid and mandelic acid if you're already using one of these ingredients and you're looking to incorporate the other you certainly can the way to do so is to make sure that you use the topical vitamin A at night before you go to bed and to use the alpha hydroxy acid product in the morning uh, that way you reduce this issue of irritation. Second combination is retinoid or retinol again with benzoyl peroxide. As I said, retinol or retinoid, these are treatments for acne. So is benzoyl peroxide. Unfortunately, benzoyl peroxide can oxidize and degrade many forms of topical vitamin A. Not all, but many. And so to be on the safe side, it's better to not combine them. Not only that, benzoyl peroxide, if you've ever used it, can be incredibly irritating. So if you have that, plus the irritation of going through the retinization process, you're more likely to have a lot of dryness and adverse side effects. So it's best not to combine them for those reasons. An exception would be adapalene, AKA Differin, which you can buy over the counter here in the United States. Um, Adapalene is a form of topical vitamin A that is actually stable in the presence of benzoyl peroxide. And as a matter of fact, it is uh, what the prescription medication Epiduo is. It's basically a combination of adapalene and benzoyl peroxide together in one cream. So uh, adapalene is the exception, but otherwise it's best not to use the two ingredients together. That also includes benzoyl peroxide in a wash. I don't recommend using a benzoyl peroxide wash before a retinol, mostly because it can increase the amount of dryness and irritation that you experience with it. Instead, use your benzoyl peroxide products in the morning and the retinol at nighttime. The third combination that is a no-go is retinol or retinoid with vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C or L-ascorbic acid is an ingredient that many people pursue for improving the look of wrinkles and fine lines, for improving hyperpigmentation and brightening up sunspots. And unfortunately, vitamin C, in order for it to really get in the skin, the product has to be at an acidic pH. On the other hand, retinols perform better at a basic pH. And so the two together, they, they don't, you know, the, the different differences in pH and how they perform make it so that you don't wanna combine the two together. Both together, of course, can increase the risk of irritation. Combination number four is retinoid or retinol 
with salicylic acid. Salicylic acid is a beta hydroxy acid that helps reduce oiliness and it, like alpha hydroxy acids, exfoliates the skin. A side effect of salicylic acid is dryness. And so the last thing you want is the dryness of salicylic acid coupled with the irritation of topical retinoids. So the two together, they're, they're not good uh, together. That doesn't mean that you can't use both ingredients, but again, it's better to use the salicylic acid in the morning. It's safe to do so and save your retinol for nighttime. The next combination you wanna avoid is soap plus vitamin C serum. Soap or cleansers tend to be at a pH that is higher than what the vitamin C is going to perform optimally at. So if you wash your face with a soap or a cleanser, uh, it can transiently raise the pH of your skin. That's part of why soaps and cleansings can lead to dry skin and irritation. They disrupt the acid mantle. And in doing so, because they raise the pH, they're going to compromise the penetration of the vitamin C into, into the skin. So you don't wanna use soap right before you use your vitamin C serum. Vitamin C serums, the best time to use them is in the morning. If you like washing your face in the morning because you find that your face is oily or greasy, then I instead recommend that you use a face wash that has alpha hydroxy acid in it. But an alpha hydroxy acid face wash can help in lowering the pH of the skin, skin barrier and then facilitating that entry of the L-ascorbic acid. Number six, combining multiple different products or layering multiple different products that have more or less the same ingredients. I see this a lot or get a lot of questions about this. For example, somebody is on prescription tretinoin, which is a form of topical vitamin A, but they're also using a retinol serum. Uh, you don't need to combine multiple forms of topical vitamin A. That doesn't get you better results. It just gets you more irritation. And if anything, you're combining these products that for whatever reason could end up compromising the stability of one another and you could actually end up getting worse results than if you just stuck to one product. Um, another example is people might use an alpha hydroxy acid face wash that has glycolic acid in it and then they might use a mandelic acid serum and then they might use a moisturizer on top of that with lactic acid. That's a lot of alpha hydroxy acid. You may not even realize that you're using so many different products with that family of ingredients. And again, alpha hydroxy acid is gonna exfoliate the skin, it can lead to dryness and irritation. And so using stacking products that have that ingredient, it's gonna increase your risk of irritation and problems. Combination number seven is copper peptides and vitamin C. Now, there's some debate about this, and copper peptides, if you're not familiar, they're used for anti-aging purposes. There is some data to suggest that perhaps they get into the skin and they help stimulate collagen production. So, you know, you obviously might be interested in using that with vitamin C, which too has been shown to potentially boost up collagen production and have that anti-aging effect. But unfortunately, a, something you have to take into account if you are going to use vitamin C and the copper peptides, is that copper actually could potentially accelerate the rate of degradation of the vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C, as I've said in other videos, is not stable, and manufacturers, you know, they, they go through quite a few hoops to stabilize the L-ascorbic acid. So copper peptides can potentially accelerate the degradation of that. And uh, your vitamin C serum should be at an acidic pH in order for the vitamin C to get into your skin effectively. And that acidic pH actually can uh, mess up or denature the peptide fragments in your peptide serum. Now an exception to this is going to be if you're using a product that is formulated with both ingredients as an all-in-one, then presumably the manufacturers you know, made the product such that it was the right pH for the L-ascorbic acid or the vitamin C to perform and the various peptides in the product or you know maybe they're encapsulated or stabilized in some way and it's fine but if you're buying multiple different products this is an issue that you could run into if you're layering them is that the copper peptides could potentially uh, degrade your vitamin c or the vitamin c could potentially degrade the peptides so if you have two products uh, and you want to use them the way to do it is to save the vitamin c for the morning and use the peptide product at nighttime. Uh, the peptide product 
more often than not is going to be in some kind of a moisturizing vehicle and you know it's going to facilitate potentially healing and repair that's the kind of thing you want to save for the nighttime and the the vitamin C you want on board in the morning, as you go throughout your day and you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, that vitamin C can help scavenge those free radicals that you're exposed to. So it's fine to do it that way, but I would avoid combining multiple products that have the two different ingredients. So those are some combinations that simply don't work. But there are, of course, as I highlighted, some exceptions. And again, if you're using a product and you look at the ingredient list and it has this combination, it, it may just be that the product is formulated appropriately so that it reduces the risk of irritation and it keeps stability across the board of the different ingredients and components. It becomes more problematic when you're talking about using different products or layering different products from different brands, then you just don't know how, how well they're gonna go together. Admittedly, there are a lot of gaps in knowledge and things that we just don't know about how different ingredients perform in the presence of other ingredients. But I can tell you from experience, your best bet is to keep your skincare routine very simple and pared down to just a few products. As I've always emphasized, you really only need uh, a sunscreen, a cleanser, and a moisturizer. And if you wanna incorporate some of these other ingredients, for anti-aging benefit, for improving hyperpigmentation, do so really conservatively. You know, I think there's this idea that once you incorporate an ingredient, then you should add something else, and then you should add something else. And there's really not, you know, you're not gonna get necessarily better results. If anything, that just puts you at risk for irritation that can take you multiple steps back in the wrong direction. Especially if you're suffering from hyperpigmentation or melasma, it can worsen that. If you have a lot of facial redness from rosacea, the last thing you want to do is, you know, have this complicated skincare routine. Your skin is just kind of going to go, what? Stop. Um, and anything that increases irritation for the skin can cause flares of acne. Uh, so these are all things that you're presumably trying to avoid. So keep the skincare routine very simple and you know, resist the temptation to try out a lot of different new products. And the best way to incorporate a new ingredient into your skincare routine is actually very slowly. You know, introduce just that ingredient into a background basic skincare routine of a cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen. Introduce it, try it out in just a test area to make sure that the product's not irritating to you. And then start using it maybe a few days a week or a few nights a week and then start increasing to nightly or you know every morning and if it's a product that says on the instructions to use twice a day then try you know slowly increasing to that twice a day and then just stick with that for three to four months because it takes a long time for a product to actually yield results and that's the key, is staying patient with something. Once you've established that you tolerate it well and that it's fine and it's not causing you any problems, stick with it. You plunk down cash on this tube or bottle or pot. So stick with it and just see how it does by itself you know, in, in the background of your basic skincare routine of cleanser, moisturizer, and sunscreen. As opposed to two weeks later bringing in somebody new um, and you know, you never really know which product is working, if, if any product is working, and you can run into the risk of irritation. I hope this video was helpful to you guys in terms of ingredients to not combine. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.